the American elites, this goes back to the Constitutional Convention, have been very concerned that uh, 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 over what's sometimes called an excess of democracy, that is real participation by the public in formulating policy. In fact, the constitutional system was designed to prevent that. Uh, Madison's conception was that uh, what he called the wealth of the nation, uh, the, uh, the responsible set of men, they're the ones who should set policy. Uh, that's why the Senate, which represented the wealthy, was given most of the power in the constitutional system, uh, least responsive to the public, uh, more uh, cons consisting of wealth. And uh, there have been battles about this all through American history, and of course things have changed a lot since the Constitutional Convention, but uh, the basic theme remains the same. Uh, so for example, the leading uh, uh, public intellectual of the 20th century, Walter Lippmann, is progressive, you know, Wilson, Roosevelt, Kennedy, progressive. Uh, his view, he wrote what are called progressive essays on democracy, very influential, and his view was that uh, the public should be uh, spectators, not participants. And that the, what he called the responsible people, people like him, the ones who make policy, uh, they should be uh, insulated from the public. As he put it, they ought to be uh, protected from the trampling and the roar of the bewildered herd, the general public, ignorant and meddlesome outsiders who don't belong in the political system. That's a very standard view. I mean, this is a version from you know, the progressive sector, but it extends pretty much across the spectrum. Now, that's why uh, after the, there was an outburst of uh, democratic participation in the 1960s. In fact, it significantly civilized the society, uh, but it caused uh, enormous concern among elites. Now, there was a major study uh, 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 called the crisis of democracy by relatively liberal elites, basically, for example, the, the Carter administration was drawn from their ranks, that sector, internationally. And they were concerned about the excess of democracy, uh, too much participation. It's an overload on the state. You can't have all these uh, so-called special interests uh, uh, pressing their own demands. Who are the special interests? It's, uh, you know, minorities, uh, women, um, the young, the old, uh, farmers, workers, in fact, the population, they're the special interests. Uh, then there's the national interest, which has to be sustained, and that's the interest of the one uh, sector that they don't mention, namely concentrated private uh, capital, which is overwhelming in its influence, but they represent the national interest, so it's okay. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, Madison had rather similar ideas. Uh, that's a leading conception of social and political thought. And there's a lot of effort put into um, uh, in, uh, instigating it. That's what propaganda is about. We don't call it propaganda, but what appears in you know, the media and the schools and so on. And you can see its effects. Mm -hmm.